Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here, got another Master Duel video, and we are live on stream once again, which of course means that it is time for another pack opening. I'm actually really excited for this one, uh, not only for the packs themselves, but also for some accessories. Um, yes, hello uh, to you <laughs> everyone on chat, say hi to YouTube, your future selves possibly. All right, let's take a peek in the shop here. Uh, we will, of course, have some free packs to open here as well. But I want to actually start the accessories, because, yeah, there's a couple I'm pretty excited about, including, including this little fella right here. Oh, yes, I'm so ready for this. I've been wondering if they were ever going to make Lightheart a mate. I kind of expected Poplar or Ponix first, but uh, I'm actually very, very glad we got Lightheart. There's also... Yes, look at this field! I love new fields, and this might be one of my favorite ones in quite a while. This one is... Very, very good. <laughs> buy into FOMO. I actually did already buy into FOMO, um, as you can see here with the wallpaper. I, if there's ever, I mean, I, I'm a total sucker for FOMO. If there's ever a limited, <laughs> if there's ever a limited time accessory in the in the shop, I always buy it. So you know, I snagged up that wallpaper as soon as I saw the date. <laughs> so World AC is a really good. Oh, I want this too. Uh, I want this for the sheer like intimidation factor. <laughs> That's good. And then U-Bell Protector. Eh. Like I've said before, I'm not usually the most into protectors that are just card art. This one actually looks pretty good. But uh, I'm going to pass on that for now. Alright. Let's take a look at packs here. So, of course we have the new Eternal Partners pack. Um, I've already seen the UR spread here. And I actually like it quite a bit. Like, I think we have a very, very good UR ratio here. Um, Ubell in particular ended up being a lot cheaper than I thought it was going to be. So, uh, I mean, as far as that goes, it's only seven URs, right? Uh, one Loving Defender, three Phantom of Ubell, and then also a playset of Nightmare Throne. But even then, if you're not playing Ubell pure and you're using Ubell as an engine, you could get away with, like, pulling just for the Nightmare Thrones and, like, a couple of Phantoms. You don't even super, like... 100% require a Loving Defender in pure U-Bell, but it's it's very, very good, of course, with the uh, the Trap Card Eternal favorite. So I, I think it's required, but you could get away without it, too. Centurion did, in fact, end up being a little more expensive, which kind of surprised me. I thought between being a meta deck and the anime tax that U-Bell was going to be the more expensive one, but Centurion... I mean, both of the 12s being URs, I guess, kind of makes sense. I think you play, like, two of each of these in, like, pure Centurion... But Centurion is um, actually much like U-Bell, very, very good as an engine. I would argue Centurion is even better as an engine than it is pure. Um, whereas U-Bell is both very, very good pure and as an engine in general. So, uh, Primera being a UR is not surprising. And then, yeah, this spell, which is a 3 of, end up being a UR as well. Uh, Iron Thunder being a UR is pretty predictable. So is Typhoon. Zeus being in here is nice. I'd really like to pull one instead of having to... Craft a second copy, but that wouldn't, wouldn't be the end of the world either. Uh, Magispectors got away pretty cleanly. I think they only got one UR here, right? This is a reprint, isn't it? The Majesty Pegasus. And then Watts got the UR. So, all in all, this is a pretty good UR spread here. Um, I also want to take a look at the Xyz Explosion card list here. I might, depending on how well I pull from the like selection pack, the other one... I might actually pull from this one a couple of times, because there's a couple of, of URs I'd like here. Uh, I don't have a Gustav Max yet. I don't have an Exciton Knight yet. Um, those are both kind of niche. I don't have a Lieb either, this one. So there's a few he things here I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be disappointed with getting. Um, but we'll see. That, of course, will depend on the Eternal Partners Falls. And then <laughs> a warrior seething with anger. Uh, the Kashtira and Gate Guardian secret pack. This is kind of funny. So there's a few things that I notice here, right? If you look at the five cards here, they don't show Fenrir or Unicorn, which means I don't think those cards are like super safe from being hit necessarily in the future. I noticed that when they released the Sprite secret pack as well, that Elf was not one of the featured URs. So I think they tend to avoid showing stuff on here that might not get hit. Now, that's pure speculation from my part, but, like, they usually showcase all URs. It's a little weird that there's even an SR here in general. I mean, to be fair, Gate Guardian only has one UR, and it's literally just this one, so you only need one copy. But I do think it is interesting, the choice of, like, URs they feature here, but that's just pure hypothesis on my part. Anyway, 
Let's uh, let's get our free pack here and see if there's anything fun in it. I have both of these decks, so I don't, I don't need anything from this pack, but... Gate Guardian's more cheap now. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Like, if you still need cash Shira stuff, you'll probably just, like, pull a Gate Guardian's combined, just opening this pack, right? And then... I mean, one Gate Guardian's combined is the only archetype-specific UR that you need for that deck, so it's a pretty cheap deck, yeah. Kind of odd. It is a little bit odd, but they're both level 7 decks, so... Um, well, I guess Gate Guardian isn't, like, specifically a level 7 deck, but all of the pieces are level 7 monsters, so... I guess that's probably why they did it. I know that a lot of the rares in here are also, like, generic rank 7s, which is actually pretty cool. I think it's, I think it's a pretty neat pack. Uh, do I get a free one of these? I don't think I do, right? I thought we, I thought you got free pulls from the selection pack. Um, but I guess not. Is that only for secret packs? I think it is only for secret packs, actually. Okay, anyway. Let's, uh, let's start opening Eternal Partners. Not for selection packs? Okay. Uh, oh yeah, and then we're gonna decraft our uh, peasant rare, <laughs> our non-royal bonfire. All right, first ten pack. Here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, okay, I see two guaranteed UR packs, so I'm I'm pretty satisfied with that. As I was saying earlier to ch to chat, I'm I'm very much looking to pull uh, a royal today. <laughs> Duh, of course everyone wants to. Nightmare Throne or Phantom of Ubel. Would be a cool royal to pull. I love white kiwi, so cute. Uh, ooh, I almost could skip. No. I like opening them one at a time. I like the tension. Hope you get a bunch of UR. Thank you. I hope you pull or have pulled well, too. Oh yeah, and the Shino the Shinobird stuff is in here, and none of it's UR. I think that's all I think the Shinobird stuff is new, isn't it? Typhoon. Typhoon, actually, that is another royal, again, that I would be very, very satisfied with. It'd be, it'd be very widely used, and also, yes, it would look extremely nice. I even take a royal dark backing beast. If we're talking about SRs, too. The Shinobu rituals are good in Megalith, hell yeah. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah, again, I don't think any of the Shinobirds are URs, which is really cool. Alright. No URs yet. A couple of SRs. Okay, here's our first UR pack. I knew it was coming. World Zeus? That would also be one... Oh, that is a possibility, too. I would also be 100% okay with that, of course. All right, looks like Iron Thunder is going to be the first UR we pull. I'm not, like, specifically looking for this card, but of course I'll keep any copies I pull. Um, I probably anticipate using this most if I play, or if, probably when, uh, let's be real, when I play in tournaments in the future where there's best of three, like, side decking, I could very easily see myself side decking this card, but uh, this card is not, not pull, or not pull, this card is not a bad card to pull either. Dinomorphia card? Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's why I saw a Dinomorphia list under, like, new decks. I saw that earlier today. I saw, like, on, uh, I think it was on Master Eagle Meta, it was, like, there's, like, three three decks with new cards, and I saw a Dino, and I was like, huh? It's Iron Thunder, that makes sense. All right, I think our last pack here is going to be the other guaranteed UR. Yep, here it is. Maybe we can get two URs in this pack? Nah. Nightmare Throne, got our first one here. Oh, I thought that was going to be royal for a second. Ah, oh, dang. You know what? We'll still take a glossy one. That's still pretty good. Yeah, uh, obviously looking for a playset of this card. And uh, anticipate using in quite a few decks. All right, let's open our next 10 packs here. Uh, ooh, no rainbow packs here, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be a UR. <laughs> that that gave me a jump scare. Like I was for a second, I was like, "Oh." <laughs> All right. There was like I think six yellow packs. So again, one of them could get upgraded to a UR pack too. That's always a possibility. 
It's Nightmare Pain. Well, of course, we need those. It's only an SR, though. Come on. Ooh. Okay, Sam Sorry, D Lotus. Another SR that we will, of course, be needing. I feel like opening one by one gives a better chance for the pack to be upgraded. Sometimes I feel that way too. Like, I mean, it's definitely, it definitely comes down to like the fact that you're not seeing if there is an upgrade when you click skip, but that inherently does make it feel like it's more likely, doesn't it? I, I definitely get exactly what you're saying. It's the new Magispector link too. I was actually surprised this wasn't a UR, but it's cool that it's not for the Magispector players. Anything in here? Nope. Alright. Uh, three more? No, two, well, two more after this. Yeah, so three total. Oh? Okay, it says SR. Watt Kingdom. That's actually another new Watt card. Can't activate the effects of a monster that... Your opponent cannot activate the effects of a monster that activate when it is normal or special summon while the same column is this card or a Watt monster control. Just want to walk, different name, lose life points, also kind of special summon. That's pretty good. It's a very specific floodgate effect. Skill drain at home. Alright. Got one more pack here. Well, if we're going to hit a dud 10 pack, then I would rather do it sooner than later. That's for sure. So... Yep, no you are. Swamp Womp. Oh well. At least the next one will. And we still have seven to go? Six to go. Um, okay, so there's at least one. Well, we were gonna get one anyway, but I did see the one rainbow pack there. Got a couple here. Samsara D Lotus and Centurion True Awakening. This card's kind of interesting because it's actually, I mean, I don't want to call it generic, but for, for being an archetype card, it actually doesn't have an archetype requirement. Um, you just have to have a monster card in your spell trap zone. That said, I, I wouldn't play this in something like Snake Eye. Like, it's not, I guess, the worst thing in the world you could ever play, but at the same time, it's kind of like a very specific going first kind of a card. Um, maybe Crystal Beast or something with a more long-term game plan would be able to make better use of something like this, but um, I wonder if you can send... Well, because Pendulum Monsters in the Pend Zone are spell cards, right? So I don't think this... I don't know. I don't know. Can this send a, a card in the Pend Zone? I actually have no idea. Uh, Sin Lucia VT, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. It's an interesting card. Yeah, not exactly. It's a non-searchable, for like Snake Eye in particular, it's like a non-searchable going first card, so... Oops, let me open one in the middle there. Watt Psychic Fighting Porter. Two level three or lower light monsters from your hand. If you summon two monsters with the same original type, those monsters can attack directly this turn if they the same original level, they also can be destroyed by battle. That's interesting. Okay. It's neat. Anything in this one? Another Nightmare Pain. I think the Royal... Uh, the Royal cheese. <laughs> I'm sounding hopeful, aren't I? I think the UR pack is going to be the second to last one, if I remember right. Yeah, so yeah, Snake Eyes does make monsters continuous spells, but again, the reason that you wouldn't really necessarily want to play the counter trap is that it's it's not searchable, so you can't guarantee that if you go first, you're going to get it. It's really only good if you do go first, setting it turn one. Outside of that, it's like, it's not a particularly good top deck. Hey, that's our first uh, Spirit of Bell, I think. Um... And it is, and like, yeah, you do put cards in, in the spell trap zone, but like, a lot of the time, it's like an IP you're going to summon off the Flamberge or something you're going to summon off the Temple, right? If it's you're uh, playing pure Snake Eye. 
again, it's not like the worst card you could play in Snake Eye, but um, there are much better cards you could play. Almost Royal, yeah, I saw that with the Spirit of U Bell. I guess it is going to be the last pack, actually, that's the UR. Okay, well, we got one here, too. Maybe even more. And it's another Iron Thunder. Okay. I'm actually not disappointed pulling these, because this is the kind of UR that I wouldn't necessarily craft, but if I pull it, I'm not going to dismantle it. Alright. It's funny, it's not even showing up in the uh, actual pack itself here. Alright, it's a Centurion card, one of the uh, level 12 Synchros. Ooh, I thought it was going to be Royal again! Centurion Auxilia. That's two times they faked me out with that. Three if you count the SR. Face up cards, your spell trap card can't be destroyed by card effects. Switch someone to a Centurion card. Seems pretty good. Alright, you yeah, know, that's not horrible. We definitely don't mind getting two in one 10 pack. Alright, so we got five more to open. Okay, here we go. Here's a couple more. A couple more URs there. What is this card? Stars? Oh, it's a Shinobi card. Stars align above the shrine. This deck has very pretty art. Can't deny that. Alright, Shinobi's leader. Alright, let's see what we got here. Majesty Pegasus. Yeah, not not super interested in the Pendulum decks myself, but oops. Oh, this is always treated as a Magic Spectre. I was wondering about that. Discord this card for this turn. Opponent can't target Draco Slayers. Push somebody to fix Draco Slayer. Pen summon at a field spell. It's not a bad card, but alas, I am not. Uh, I'm really not much of a Pendulum player. I think the only Pendulum deck I've ever played on the channel was a. Uh, well, besides Super Heavy Samurai, I guess, was DDDs. Field Spell fixes the deck. Oh, is the um, Magic Spectre Field Spell a new card? I don't know much about Magic Spectres as an archetype. What's up, Elementian? Desire sensor on day one. I mean, I feel like I usually do pretty well on day one pulls personally But I feel like they've been pretty average so far Why do you only play meta I play more than meta But I like playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! I find competitive play extremely fun. I like a uh, I like just cranking it up to 10 and fighting against other people who are doing the same. I find that, that like, high power play extremely fun. I thought we had two UR packs, did we not? Did we already pull a UR? Okay, maybe that was weird. Because there's a UR in this one, but I thought there was two glowing rainbow packs. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to go back and watch that later. Okay, this one is a Zeus. Okay, yeah, again, I'm not disappointed to pull this because I do need a second copy. Now the card is at two, so. Okay, here. Oh, no, wait, I think we did see the other UR pack already. It was at the beginning. I'm just done. All right, we got this. Ooh, got something here. It's an SR. And this one is another Zeus. Ah, dang. I was looking to see if it was going to be Royal. Okay, so obviously we don't have a need for the third copy. Like, honestly, even if Zeus did go to three, like, what deck would you play? I don't know, maybe Zodiac? But even Zodiac, I feel like you would be fine with only two Zeus. So I'm probably not going to keep the third copy, even if I think this card will go to three eventually, which I kind of do, honestly. Like, when I saw Zeus to two when that ban list got revealed, at first I was like, whoa! But then I thought about it, and I was like, there's not even that many decks that want two Zeus, honestly. Exceeds event. <laughs> Two Zeus is gonna go pretty hard in the Xyz event, isn't it? Um, oh, that was weird. Did you see that? Hang on, I want to watch that back on the. Yeah, the rainbow glow went away for a second. That was weird. Okay, maybe that happened last time too. 
Gordon <laughs> Zeus three times. <laughs> That's good. That was Konami. <laughs> that was Konami juicing the pack. God, I hope so. That'd be cool. <laughs> this is scamming you. <laughs> Konami actively hacking, hacking <laughs> the packs in my account to make sure I don't pull well. That's funny. <coughs> Duelist Pass grind? Yeah, I haven't really been playing a lot the past couple of days. I've just kind of been chilling, so... I haven't been doing work on my Duelist Pass or in raiding duels. I'm still, like, at 1500. I just haven't really been playing too much Yu-Gi-Oh. These are our first Eternal Favorites, I think, that we've pulled. Okay, here's the UR. Got one here, and it's Embla Oath. Okay. I kind of there's a part of me that would also rather pull Centurion cards than Ubel almost because again, like I'm gonna play Ubel. I'll craft them all if I have to, but I don't necessarily feel like quite as strongly about Centurion. This is like the ah, this is like the fifth time a UR or SR flipped over and it was glossy, not royal. They're really juking me. Two more packs here. Yeah, Centurion did get hit with the UR attack starter. That is that is still pretty wild to me. I was so sure Ubel was. Like I was looking at Ubel cards and I I thought like Geist Grinder was gonna Geist Grinder rather was gonna be the only card like under SR for a second. I was looking at him. I was just so sure, but No, they 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 didn't totally screw over uh, people who want to try that deck. Yeah, Spirit, I thought was going to be UR. I thought there was a chance that maybe Nightmare Pain would be a UR, but... Alright, how many uh, gems do we have left? You know what, also, what I might do... Because I still have my Dual Pass here, rewards. I was going to wait and save these, but I'm just going to cash these in now. Perfect, I was hoping that would give me at least 700. So now, now if we need to pull an extra 10-pack, we can. Beautiful. Alright. Actually got me exactly as many as I needed. That was good. Um, ugh. No, no rainbow packs there. Unless it was flickering again. <laughs> like you did on that last one. Evil hero you bells? You could probably do that. I mean, oh, there's a UR in this pack. Okay. And it's the Watt one. Watt... Yuki. Level 8, 1600, 1700. Watt 200, not 200. Can attack directly. Flicks battle damage by direct attack. You can shuffle both one Watt 200 for your game and one piece of non 200 Thunder Monster. You control the extra key. Especially when a Watt Synchro. That's interesting. Okay. If you don't need that many URs, like if that's the only UR you need for Watt, I think one of their other Synchros is a UR too, though. But if that's like the only UR you need, I, I'll try Watt, sure. What? <laughs> Desire sensor is not a myth. I, d I don't actually believe in in really any amount of game rigging from Konami's part. To be fair, I'm very, very, very slightly more inclined to believe pack rigging than uh, coin flip rigging, or like hand or like shuffler rigging. Shuffler rigging is actually just the dumbest conspiracy theory I've ever heard I've ever heard, but but I also do not believe that Konami rigs the packs. That is something that is like not terribly difficult to find out. Um and highly, 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 highly illegal. Many gotcha games get shut down for doing that, and I don't always really see Konami like risking that. Especially when Yu-Gi-Oh! is already such a successful IP, like they don't have to rig packs to make money. Ooh, there's another UR in here. Hell yeah. The other Centurion, level 12. That's cool. Legata. Your monster 2,000 or less attack can be destroyed by battle. Special summon draw a card, and you can destroy a monster your opponent controls with the highest attack. So that's actually not bad to summon on your opponent's turn. That's cool. That's like a decent level 12 target for Crimson Dragon. There's still better ones, like uh, Blazar and Red, no Red Supernova. No, just it's just Supernova, but... Still a cool card. 
<laughs> and now we can hard make Zeus. I've actually had the option to do that before in playing Horus the Echeria. I still remember that, like having the Quasar and, uh, not Quasar, the Blazar and the Supernova on the field and being like, why can I make Zeus right now? Oh yeah, two level 12 monsters. <laughs> What royal are we pulling for? Um, I wouldn't mind Typhoon. I, I really, actually, I, if I could pick one, it'd probably be Nightmare Throne. Even if Typhoon would go in more decks, like, I have a couple of decks in mind that I'm gonna play Nightmare Throne in. Ubel's a pretty good package, and I think that card would probably look pretty sick as a royal. But to be fair, the, uh, um, Typhoon would also look very sick as a royal. I'd take just about any royal from this pack and not be too dissatisfied. The Watt one, maybe I wouldn't be the most happy, but... I don't know, actually. If I pulled a royal of the Watt Synchro, especially given that I already pulled a non-royal, would I dismantle it? I might, actually. Okay, so two URs in a pack that didn't have any rainbow packs is definitely not bad. Uh, okay, got a couple more. Game's just given us to him a couple at a time. Uh, one in Nightmare Throne, I think, is the only U-Bell UR we've pulled so far. We could also still craft Royals. That is a thing that could happen. That did happen with, uh, oh. Oh, no, this was a Rainbow Pack, I think, was it? Yeah. Another Centurion, okay. Again, I'm actually pretty happy to pull these. I think that's the one you play... Because, like, you can play... One of them is a one of, and I think the I think we pulled the one two of the one that you play is a two of. If that made any sense. Yeah, we crafted Bonfire as a royal, and then we also crafted Preventer as a royal. Which of the two is harder to pilot, Ubel or Fire King Snakes? I don't have experience playing Ubel yet, uh, so uh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> um, that said, I was watching uh, some videos earlier today, and the Ubel lines don't seem terribly complicated. I feel like they're probably about the same. Ubel and Fire King Snake Eye. I don't think Fire King Snake Eye lines are too horribly complicated either. Another Embla Oath. Pulling a lot of the Centurion URs. But I haven't pulled any of the main deck monster you are. This is my second of the spell, though, which is not bad. So I think that's what four more you are is for Centurion. That's not bad. The Fire King Snake. Oh, hey, there's another one. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, now we have two of each of the Synchro. The game is uh, really pushing me towards Centurion here, which I definitely don't mind. Believe it or not, you, you can convince me to play a Synchro deck. There's another one, and that's another Centurion? Okay. <laughs> sure. The third copy I'll probably get rid of, actually. I probably won't keep that. Centurion Blackwing? That sounds cool. Uh, oh, we still have two more packs. I thought that was the last one for some reason. But yeah, I was looking at U-Bell lines earlier, and I already, like, the, the, what I consider to probably be the base com one card combo line of, like, opening Nightmare Throne, I feel like I have that down pretty well. Uh, yeah, four URs in that one, so double the amount, they were all Centurion cards. Again, game seems to be pushing me in a direction here. Got two more 10 packs to open. This one has a UR. I'm just really hoping... Oh, it's got two, because this is an upgrade. Hell yeah. I'm just always anxious about the last 10 pack, because I really... It really sucks when that one doesn't have a UR, because that means you're going to have to spend another 1,000 to get your value out of the selection pack before it leaves the shop at some point. So, hey, there we go. Ubel, the loving defender forever. So we did pull another Ubel UR. Uh, this is the fusion that you only need one copy of, um, but it's an excellent super poly target as well as, uh, of course, eternal favorite target as well, so I don't mind pulling the one of, or any amount of, again, any amount of cards I'll play here, so. 
So Yubel has seven URs we're looking for, and we pulled two of them. Okay. We'll look at the totals after we open the last ten pack. Alright, here is a UR pack. <laughs> no, we bell. <laughs> It's our third Iron Thunder. Oh my god, that's the third! That's the third time! That's the third time they've juked me with the UR flip. Ah! <laughs> but I, I definitely don't mind pulling a play set of Iron Thunder. Again, card I will probably play at some point in the future, but uh, would not be very, like... Again, I, this is a card that I, I will not dismantle, but I probably wouldn't go out of my way to craft. So I definitely don't mind pulling it, that's for sure. I know, that Iron Thunder would have looked good as a royal. I feel like, is there a bad looking royal? I've mentioned this before, I don't think I've seen a royal and thought that doesn't look great. I can't think of one off the top of my head. I feel like they did a good job with the royal animation. I know some people don't like the glossy animation, which I get. I don't mind it. I actually like it quite a bit, but I, I also get... Uh, that one, the glossy, I, I do feel like there are some arts where I'm like, eh, not really that great. Oh, this is you are. It's another loving defender. So that one, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to keep the second copy, but definitely don't mind pulling bonus you are, that's for sure. Some punk cards look better glossy than royal. I could believe that. Punk cards are, are some good looking glossies. I, I definitely can tell you that. Oh, okay, there's something here and here. Right, SRS. Yeah, SRS. We'll take them. All right, last pack for this one. Then we got one more 10 pack. Alright, so again, got got some bonus UR action here. Definitely won't be disappointed with that. Last one, please have a rainbow pack. Oh, I don't like this. Ah! <laughs> I don't like this. Alright. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Hopefully we get at least one UR out of this. Rooting for you, thank you. <laughs> I mean, if we don't, it's not the end of the world. We just simply buy another 10 pack whenever we get a thousand gems. <laughs> oh? Maybe? Hopefully? Nah. World Samsara? I would be fine with that. <laughs> Not yet. No Royals yet. <laughs> Could still craft them, though. That has quite a bit of crafting to do, actually, after all this. Please, please, let me get at least one you are. I don't want to pull more from this pack. <laughs> so many, so many SRs and URs getting flipped over. So few Royals. Royal Typhoon. Looking for it. Alright, last pack. I'm not feeling super hopeful, though. <laughs> And it's... yeah, it's, it's an eternal favorite. 
All right, so that means we're going to have to come back to this pack at some point for our, our guaranteed UR. Um, but the thing that sucks about that is that I don't want to do that before I start crafting everything. <laughs> there is also uh, this option. Uh, but there's not even any sales going on. Yeah, no, fuck that. I'm not buying gems that aren't on sale. So, All right, that'll end up doing it for the um, pack opening video. So thank you, everyone, for watching that one of course it's not gonna be it for the stream so those of you who are watching live right now uh we're gonna keep on going but for those on youtube uh definitely stay tuned for some uh deck profiles of course with the new stuff um U bell combo guide will probably come at some point uh relatively soon as well and we will keep rolling from there so uh that's gonna be it again for the youtube video for that we'll move on to the outro a few moments later. Um, okay, so it's just the... So yeah, the, we need five. We need the two Nightmare Thrones and the three Phantoms. Alright, we simply craft the Royals. Ready? <gasps> oh my god! We actually did it! We actually did it! Let's fucking go! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew this was gonna happen. I even said if there was one I was gonna pick, it would be Nightmare Throne. I wish to make a Typhoon as well. That's incredible. That is that is pretty darn good, if I do say so myself, and I do in fact uh, say so myself. Hey everybody, Hexlex here. Just want to give you a huge thanks for watching all the way to the very end of the video. Uh, believe it or not, that is actually one of the best ways that you can support the channel, is by watching the videos in their entirety. But there are many ways in which you can support the channel if you are so interested. Uh, the names that you're seeing on screen here, I gotta give an extra special thanks to, because these are people who have chosen to either become a member on YouTube, which if you're interested in, you can do as well via the join button next to the subscribe button down there uh, or have signed up over on patreon and become members there link to that is going to be in the description below uh, without the support that is being offered by again all the people that you're seeing on screen right here um, I would not be able to take the time to dedicate to uploading daily YouTube videos so thank you thank you so very much but uh, there are also other ways you can support as well um, again link to the description below if you like my deck tracker that you'll see in a lot of my videos the untapped companion you can download that for free and if you use my affiliate link down there uh, then that also goes a long way towards supporting the channel uh, that's again free so is subscribing here on YouTube that's also free and a huge way to support uh, you can also uh, check out twitch once again linked in the description below following and subscribing over there will not only support as well but also give you notifications of when I go live if you want to catch some of the live streams um, but really no matter how you choose to support uh, it all adds up and it all definitely means the world so thank you each and every one of you uh, for now this is Hexlex I'm gonna be signing out but more than that, I'm hoping that you have a fantastic day.